Hi again everyone, SMC here. I'm glad we made it through another week and I am super glad today is Halloween day. It's awfully exciting and the best time of the year. I have another Crime Scene Stories video and I tried to recreate a makeup look from a Robert Welsh tutorial, but I didn't watch the tutorial. I just took the still and was like, I can do this because I've watched so many of his videos. Uh, it did not turn out at all like the way the picture looks, obviously. I gave it my best shot and it was fun while I did it. Part of, you know, makeup and what I'm even doing here is telling you stories, but also learning how to do stuff. And it's really good because I'm a skeleton for Halloween and since it looks kind of ghastly now, then my transition from normal face to skull face is gonna be pretty easy this afternoon before me and Sweet Pea go trick-or-treating. As usual, if you would consider subscribing, that would be wonderful. If you have any questions about crime scene, questions about makeup, what I've learned, how I've learned it, or if there's maybe something you've been trying that you just can't get, link it to me, email it to me, describe it to me, and I will try to learn it and then share in a future video. And also, as always, crime scene stories by their very nature may contain material that is sensitive, graphic, or disturbing in nature and viewer discretion is highly advised. If you're having thoughts or feelings of hurting yourself or others, you need to talk to someone. Don't just put it on blast on social media. Don't just send somebody a cryptic or confusing, worrisome text message. Get somebody on the phone, get them in person, whatever you have to do to talk these feelings out. That could be a friend, a family member, someone from your neighborhood, someone from your church, if that's what you're into, a coworker, just talk it out with someone. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number is 1-800-273-TALK. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. If you go online and you look at your local police agency's um, website, it should have a non-emergency number. You can call that phone number and tell someone what's going on, or you can call 911 and tell someone what's going on. It's just imperative. If you have thoughts or feelings of hurting yourself or others, talk to someone immediately, and that could help you keep from doing something that you might really regret and that you may not be able to take back. Now that we have the disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to come right back and show you how to get this makeup look, which is not <laughs> what it was supposed to be. I'm sorry, Robert. I still adore you, and I should have watched the video because I know you, <laughs> you could teach me how to do it right. Consider subscribing. Consider leaving some comments if you like what I'm doing, if you have questions, or again, if you want me to try to learn something to help teach it to you in a way that's more real life and realistic hit me up. So I will be right back to show you some makeup. Thank you guys for hanging around and if you chose to subscribe in those couple seconds from the intro to now, double thank you. I apologize if you can hear the little fan I have going but I'm sweating to death so I need it. I My face is already moisturized and clean of course. I'm doing something a little bit different is that I'm using this primer water setting spray first because I had heard on one of Robert's videos that that's a good thing to do and that more of a moisture spray kind of works to refresh and make your makeup look amazing but as a setting spray maybe not so much and I feel like it has worked and his reasoning which is yeah sound was that because what messes your makeup up over the day is the oil and sweat and everything coming out of your skin. It's not some onslaught from the outside. That's why the setting spray first just helps as an additional primer. I have a little bit more time than I usually do, but I still will probably have to work quickly. And because I am attempting to recreate one of his looks, and I didn't watch the tutorial, that uh, I may have to spend more time on my eyes than I usually would. A little bit below. I have mentioned Robert Welsh before in my videos. 
I absolutely adore this guy. He is so knowledgeable and the way he delivers his information, he seems incredibly personable. I wish I could meet him in real life. Actually, I wish I could meet him in real life and have him do my makeup for some special occasion. So maybe if I make it back to the UK and I am local to where he is and I can afford to book him, I will. Even if it's just, hey dude, I wanna book you, just do my makeup for today so I can actually hang out with you for 30 minutes or an hour. I think that would be amazing. Those of you who like to learn makeup and actually want to learn realistic things you can do to your face, you should be a subscriber and a fan of his if you're not already. And even this whole series was very much inspired by listening to him tell ghost stories while he put makeup on because I was like, hey, I've got something that people love to talk about. And I love makeup, so I can do that too. One second. I'll be right back. I saved the picture on my phone, and I know I already showed it to you guys. It's definitely pretty dark. I'm going for more of a darker brown. It looks like he used a fair amount of black. And I did bring some black in. And then the innermost part of the halo is this pretty metallic. I see there's a cut crease in there that I can try to do. Here goes nothing. Today's crime scene stories I have decided will be kind of do as I say and or do um, because most of us aren't going to be doing things that result in someone dying. So many years ago, some of the first few times that I had a trip to the morgue, the first one there was a dead infant. The autopsy was finished up. The baby was, you know, the Y incision was sewn shut. And the tech was working on just cleaning up, wiping down the work surface. And this was my very first trip to the morgue. So I'd never been there before for any reason. And the girl that was, I was with, she's like, oh, you have a baby. And she walks over. And as I'm walking up, I, you know, it looked fake and I was thinking that it was some like a training dummy and then it clicked in my head like no this is not a training dummy because this is the actual morgue <laughs> you know the people who are in here working and these techs and everybody in the docks they've all already done their medical training there is no reason for them to be having a training dummy in this environment. I mean, it wasn't a, like a teaching hospital or anything. You know, my head and kind of trying to compartmentalize what I was seeing, I guess, it uh, was saying fake, but then when the logic took over and it's like, no, real, it is kind of shocking to the system when you've never seen something like that before. This tech who is wiping the table just continues to wipe the infant with the same sponge, didn't rinse it, and then he kind of like flips the infant over and is wiping it. And that, I was like a deer in the headlights, just kind of frozen. And I, in my head, I was like, I don't even think I can handle this, you know, because he was, to me, treating the infant just like it was a thing, not like it was this tiny baby. Look at the butterfly. Beautiful! I felt that there still should be some care exercised in the handling of that body. So in my head I was like, I don't know if I can do this, I don't think I can handle this type of seeing this stuff. And then I was like, well whatever, my educational background is kind of preparing me to be a lab rat anyway, not a field mouse, so I can always rest on those laurels and I can go into some lab and I never have to see these kinds of things. And the point of the do as I say and do is that infant was there because she had been shaken to death by one of her parents. I don't know, dad, mom, whatever. One of her parents shook her until she died. And that is so appalling to me that someone could do that to some, to a baby. Even at that time, I wasn't a mom. It wasn't even anywhere on my horizon that I would ever be a mom but it was like 
what the heck is wrong with you that you think that is the answer? No matter how stressed out or drunk or high or I don't even care. There is no justification for that reaction. So that is why you're not supposed to do things like that because the largest portion of the population and humanity knows that's wrong and knows they're not going to do something like that. The shock of it, of the tech kind of flipping and flopping the baby and wiping it with the same sponge that he was wiping the table, really, I thought was pretty terrible and I really didn't know how I was going to professionally be able to overcome that shock to still be able to do my job. Well, the next time I went to the morgue, there were two toddlers who were deceased and the person who was moving them about had, was actually like picking them up, cradling them in her arms and moving it like a child, you know, kind of like maybe you would move a sleeping child. I felt she was handling them with a lot more care and it was with more respect. And when I saw that, you know, there was no shock. It was like, now that's what you're supposed to do. You should treat the body with this much respect because that was a person and especially because that was a child. And I don't know how these children were there, so I can't add that in the do as I say and do storyline because, I mean, it is surprising that there were two there at the same time, but I mean, that could have been a car accident. It could have been anything. I don't actually know why they were deceased. But if they were deceased for some mistake of the parent or caregiver, then yeah, again, do as I say and do. Uh, don't do as you did because obviously you're incapable of protecting any other human being, especially a child. I know in this field we have to have defense mechanisms. Many of us have very dark senses of humor. That's just the way we make it through the day and we make it through this traumatic thing over and over again and we're still able to get the job done without making any mistakes. And the defense mechanism maybe for that first tech was that he was very disassociated from the individual he was working on and that it was a body, it was not a person and that was how he can still make it through the day Mommy, and that he can this, do his chosen profession Mama, forever. Yes, we are. And this, the word we're supposed to do is take off this so we can You can, so it's easier to get to the stickers. Okay, I thought, I thought that was wrong. No, it's not wrong, babe. Then you can fast forward a bit. And this story is a story that is all adults. He had been staying at uh, a religious sort of compound. Compound has a negative connotation. This wasn't a negative place. So it was just a large piece of property, but it was like a religious camp or campus, something like that. And this individual adult hadn't stayed there for very long and he just shows up kind of around dinner time there were a few, the man and wife who ran the place, and maybe a couple of other adults. And they were also, and this was kind of the dining room, I think. The dining room or the prayer room, or maybe it served as both. Because it's not like this place had, you know, so many buildings. But this was in the lower level of the house on the property. But it also was where the individuals would come together and... I, so I guess it did serve both purposes, dining as well as studying their scriptures. This guy walks in and I, I think he had come in and then he went into the kitchen area which was just off this studying area and got a large kitchen knife, walks back into the area and he begins to stab the husband, stabs him to death. He stabs the wife multiple times, not fatally, but does injure her pretty severely because she was running around all over the house and she's just, blood is going everywhere. 
from her wounds. He then leaves and he calls 911 and he says, I need the police and an ambulance because I just stabbed somebody. And the 911 dispatcher thought it was some kind of prank and I think actually disconnected with the guy. He calls back and he says the same thing. And I guess the person or whoever answered that time decided to take it seriously and sent some police out there and an ambulance and that is what they found. He did dispose of the knife somewhere. At that point in time, we searched and searched and searched and we did not find it anywhere. But he was just sitting there waiting for the police to come and detain him. So they arrest him without issue and the rest is history. I don't know what his sentence was. We all know we shouldn't just be attacking people or brutally killing them in their places of worship, but that's what he did. The next one is a man and woman, and this man decided to kill his wife while she slept. He shot her in the back, good for her that she didn't suffer. He then turned the gun to himself, to his chest area, pulls the trigger, and only really injures himself. He doesn't kill himself. And then he called 911 because, you know, he just shot himself in the chest and it really hurts. And he says, I need an ambulance. Somebody's been shot. And the dispatcher's like, what, what? And you can hear him, oh, ow, oh, moaning and groaning because it hurts so much. And then he says, you know, my wife has been shot. I need an ambulance. I've been shot. I shot my wife. I've been shot. Sir, sir, what did you say? And she's still kind of trying to talk to him a little. Sending out the police in an ambulance, and that's what we find. You could tell she didn't, she was sleeping because of the way her body positioning was when we arrived on scene. It just appeared that she was asleep. You could see that there was the entry wound to the back with no exit wound to the chest and so that the shot came from behind. Autopsy report, Emmy said, oh yeah, she died, you know, within seconds of the shot because of the way that it, that, how it injured her heart. I believe that the guy, maybe he thought he was just gonna die instantly too from having shooting himself in the chest like that. But thankfully, he did not, and he was able to be arrested, and I'm hoping thrown in jail for killing his wife. So there's another one, you know, don't kill people while they're sleeping. <laughs> and I guess if you do, maybe injure yourself in such a way that you can still stand trial, because that's kind of what we want to happen to people like you. Uh, we don't want you to just get to take the easy road and kill yourself and get away with the horrific thing that you did. At least I don't want you to. And I'm pretty sure if I did a you know, street poll, everybody else is gonna agree with me. The next one is for any pregnant female. We had a girl young, not like 12 or anything, but 15, 16 years old, old enough, right? Had the baby at home, took it outside, and killed it. And then was going to throw it in the trash can, I guess, to be put out with the garbage whenever the trash truck came. But her mom caught her out in the yard, saw the body, and was like, what the hell are you doing? Police get called. Her story changed quite a few times, but it always, the one part that remained consistent was that I never knew I was pregnant. I've only been pregnant once, and I had that baby. And I can tell you <laughs> that pretty much every day I knew I was pregnant. I was exhausted. One day I threw up. I know some women, they swear up and down. I didn't know I was pregnant. I never knew and then all of a sudden I'm in labor and I'm having a baby. I find that super duper hard to believe because even if you didn't think for 
like even one second, oh, there's no way I can be pregnant. You would probably go see a doctor because you'd be like, well, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I feel terrible. I have no energy. I'm starting to gain a bunch of weight or I'm starting to throw up all the time. I just feel like you would go seek medical attention because you would think there was something seriously wrong with you. Even if you didn't want to believe, not even for a minute, that it could be that you became pregnant from, you know, how people typically become pregnant. And the girl, after she finally admitted to having killed the baby, it was because I didn't want to get in trouble or I didn't know what people were going to think. Something along those lines. And it's like, girl, come on now. There are 16 year old girls who get famous just by being pregnant on MTV. It's not the 1950s. It's not going to be a big problem. So that was a really, really weak excuse as to why she felt she needed to do what she did. Thankfully, I think she ended up charged as an adult. I don't know what the disposition of her case was, but I hope she got a lot of time in jail. If you find yourself in the situation where you are having a baby because, you know, you had a little bit of fun and now you're pregnant, uh, you don't have to just kill the infant. You can, you can take it to a police station, a fire station, a hospital, most churches. And depending on what state you live in, you can do that for the first like week and just leave the baby there. You're not breaking any laws. No one's going to try to find you. You are totally within your legal rights to just abandon that infant at some of one of those locations I just named off and just walk away. And they, and it, that infant will be taken care of. I would think even if it was an older infant, that you could probably do the same thing. I don't think anybody's going to try to track you down just to arrest you. Especially if, for whatever reason in your mind, you believe the only other option is to actually execute said baby rather than just abandon it. I think everybody in the world would agree. No, the much better option is to abandon the baby rather than leave it or kill it. I've been to another one where the infant, very small, so, you know, a couple months old maybe, who had health issues, the parents decided to co-sleep. Both of these parents, you know, full-size adults, they were both overweight, not morbidly obese, but definitely not just, you know, like the average person wandering around with a few extra pounds on them. There was a case or 18 pack of beer in the room. This was in a place where marijuana is really plentiful. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all if the parents had been smoking a bit, maybe drinking a bit. They were intoxicated in one form or another. And they decided to go to sleep with this baby in their bed with them. Their queen size bed, not a king, a queen. So now you have two pretty large adults in a smallish bed with the baby. And lo and behold, the baby doesn't make it through the night. So we're there investigating this accidental death that was 110% preventable had they just not co-slept. Those types of scenes are really infuriating to me because now here a child has died that could have been completely prevented and nobody's going to be held accountable or responsible for the death of this child. And I find that just reprehensible that you can't just arrest them. I mean, there's so much research. Any doctor you talk to, if you're like, hey, should I co-sleep with my one month old baby? They're gonna say, uh, hell no. If you don't have the proper type of like a bassinet that's meant to go in the bed with an adult or one of those that is like alongside the bed, they're gonna say no. And there's proponents of co-sleeping. Oh, tens of thousands of years, human beings have been, you know, sleeping with their infants. And it's like, well, we don't have records back then of how many infants actually survived those conditions. However, 
look at how human beings were living back then. We didn't have cushy pillow top or memory foam mattresses with big fluffy duvets and all these pillows. They might have been sleeping. Hold on, sweetheart. Yes, you can. They were sleeping on something hard with hardly any bedding or they were sleeping on the ground. So there's a, there's a very big difference between tens of thousands of years ago and today. Now, if you want to throw your bed out and you and your infant sleep on the floor together, maybe that would be okay. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I do know that all signs point to don't do this. We're telling you it's dangerous. And yet people do it all the time and then they accidentally kill their babies. And people are like, oh, it's such a tragedy. Poor parents, it's like, it's a tragedy for that kid that we can't arrest the parents for being dumb and not following the advice of anybody who told them not to do that, that it is dangerous. And the real kicker in that situation was the crib was right against the wall in that same bedroom. And that infant could have been placed in the crib. The parents could have been sleeping right there in the bed. It would still be alive today. I even, I went to a child death investigations course where there were a couple female detectives who were sitting behind me telling all these case studies about infants and children who have died. And some parents, because this was based on case studies that were just nationwide, and some of these people had had two or even three children die. And I was like, at what point can we start kind of arresting these people? And the speaker, you know, was listening to my question. And I hear these female detectives behind me go, they've suffered enough. And it took all my restraint not to turn around and say, no, they haven't suffered enough. The only people who suffered in those case studies were the children who died. And the ones who had multiple children die, finally at like the third one, they were being charged with, you know, negligent homicide or whatever they were getting charged with, which was good. But it's like, should it really take three before somebody like steps up and says, no, <laughs> this happened already, you know, it may be. I feel like even one death is far too much to be considered acceptable without punishing the parents. You know, maybe they're just lucky I'm not a lawmaker or a judge. I guess I throw a lot of people in jail for stuff that is 100% preventable because I don't have the mentality of they've suffered enough because I don't believe that they have in that situation. I believe that the child suffered at the hands of incompetence the incompetence needs to be handled. Because again, if, if you can't handle or you don't want that baby, nobody's forcing you to keep it. There's adoption. You just have to decide that you are the, that person, that you cannot handle this. You do not want the responsibility. Go ahead and give up. This does not look at all like the picture. Robert did talk a little bit about using black very sparingly in a video I watched recently just to help deepen colors. So that's what I'm doing now to add some more dimension because of course the metallic I put in there just kind of took over and I'm not getting the good differentiation of the halo. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm being way too strict and harsh in my opinion do you guys side with those female detectives oh those people suffered enough or do you think what i'm saying is like pretty much what you would say too like oh hell no those people should be in trouble for instance you know if i strap a baby good girl so for instance if i take a baby or a young child and i put it into a car not in a car seat, I'm going to get a ticket if I get caught driving around. If I go out and get drunk and then I put a kid in my car and I go out driving around, I'm going to get in really big trouble. I'm going to get the DUI, but I'm probably going to get, you know, endangerment of a child, charges, something pretty significant along with 
my DUI. I know that it is dangerous to drive when I'm drunk. I know that it is dangerous to not properly secure a child into a moving vehicle. I can get in trouble for both of those things that I do. But if I know that it's dangerous for me to get drunk and go to bed with my one month old, and I do it anyway, and then I roll over and I smother that kid, why is it that I don't get in trouble for that? It doesn't make sense. That's my opinion on it, that do as we say, because we're telling you, don't screw up and accidentally kill people, and do as we do, because most of us do just that. We follow the advice given by our teachers or our doctors or whoever, and nobody ends up hurt, child or adult. That's why I do as I say, and do. Well, at least it's all right that it looks crazy because today's Halloween, what, what? So exciting. One thing I love about Robert's makeup, I don't know if he ever uses eyeliner. I mean, sometimes I guess when he does a nice wing or something, but he's able to make these amazing eye looks just with shadow and just with these colors. And that's really what I want to copy and try to learn from him because it just is so cool and it's just so nice and smoky and he it really is an expert Ooh, I look ghastly Robert really is an expert he's been doing makeup professionally for 13 years and that means that if he only because they consider an expert is someone who's done something for 10,000 hours. And I did the math and at 13 years, he would only need to do, I don't know if it was like three hours a day, something like that, to where he would have done and logged enough hours to be considered an expert. So the vice you see on his channel is truly coming from someone who knows their shit. Plus, He's just adorable, and he's funny. After you binge watch a bunch of his videos, you're just gonna come to love his expressions and mannerisms. That yeah, you will really think he's awesome like I do. Oof, I don't know. I feel like I'm just making it worse the more that I'm messing with it. I'm gonna kind of race through everything else because nothing else is gonna be special. It's all just the same stuff I do every week. Well, it's fitting for Halloween. It is not at all what the picture looks like, but it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> I mean, he would probably think it looks terrible. Maybe I should have watched the tutorial so I could actually make a real attempt at replication. But, you know, makeup is fun and I'm learning. Hopefully you're learning. Hopefully you enjoyed some crime scene stories today and that you consider subscribing. Also, if you want to interact, ask a question, tell a story of your own, give me an opinion, whatever, just write it down below in the comments and I will answer all of them that I possibly can, which is should be all because I really don't get any and I would love to get some more. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye.